come on in and we are doing a recap review of the one, which is season one, episode nine, called The Runaway Bride. Uh, my name is Deborah, and I'm doing the review on the Kirk Franklin, The One. But be sure to like and subscribe to my video because later this weekend, I'm going to be uploading two new videos. I'm actually going to do a video on, I don't know if any of you guys have been watching uh, Martha's Vineyard. It's all over with now. And I watched the last episode, but I actually want to do a video on some of the breakdown of the characters. I found some of them very interesting. I just didn't do the reviews see, uh, episode after episode, but I do want to do an overall review of the characters, not what happened per se, uh, bit by bit. But I'm also going to do another review on Rashid and Simone. Besides the fact that Ready Love comes on uh, today, Friday, I'm going to do a review on that too. But Rashid and Simone, uh, thank y'all for letting me know. They did an uh, interview with a Dear Wifey podcast. I had never watched that podcast before. I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed the gentleman who runs the podcast. I think his name is Laterris or Whitfield. And boy, oh boy, I got some new things to talk about uh, with Simone and Rashid. I think it's still interesting enough that I still want to talk about a little bit of it. I thought I would be done with them, but I thought this podcast brought something new to the table and I want to talk about it. But anyway, we're going to get going on the one season one, episode nine called The Runaway Bride. Because um, let me tell you, Miss Ashley was nowhere in sight for about, what, a whole day, a day and a half. But the star of the show, she, she, Ashley can stay gone. Because let me tell you who the star of the show is. The star of the show is Black Jesus. Black Jesus, I tell you what, Black Jesus is off the chain. He's a little bit of a combination between a truth teller and being messy. <laughs> He's a little bit of both. He's definitely a little messy. But let me tell you, he be spent some truth. And let me tell you, these people don't want the wrath of black Jesus. They can't handle it. They cannot handle the wrath of black Jesus. He chewed up Matthew in this episode. He kind of chewed up a jazzy in the previous episode. And people can't handle his wrath. They can't handle when he puts them on the hot seat and turns it around on them. They can't handle it. But he's a little messy. He absolutely is a little messy. And um, Ashley sent him home because she can't handle the wrath. She sent him home because she can't handle the wrath and the judgment of black Jesus. And before we all get all the way into it on Ashley's uh, with black Jesus, I just got to say this. Did another woman dump Brent? <laughs> did another woman uh, dump Brent? Yes, she did. Her name is Jazzy. She dumped him. She says, um, I can already tell you the type of man that want a, a bunch of women chasing you all the time. And what she says is, I'm not competing for no man. Sure, it's confusing because this is a competition and you should have known that this was what was the dating show was about. But I think it's a little bit more. I think what Jazzy saw was a part of the personality of Brent that she just didn't gel with. And that is, it's just not competition for the show purpose. It really is who Brent is. And that's what I said about Brent. Brent really believes he's the prize out here at 43 years old. He still thinks he's a 24, 25, 30-year-old man with muscles and good looking with his whole life ahead of him. And there are a lot of women clamor for him. I see he's a fraternity boy. I see his little brand on his arm that he's an Omega. And he's used to women chasing him, probably been happening all his life. And he hasn't come, he hasn't come to the realization that he's now a 43-year-old man. And although he's good looking, he's going to need to bring a little bit more to the table. This show is starting to be a, 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 a really rude awakening. I hope, I hope it's a rude awakening for Brent because Brent came in here with a whole lot of arrogance and thinking that his stuff don't stink and that he's the best thing since sliced bread. But what a lot of these women are telling him is that, hey, you are a nice looking guy. There are some nice things about you, but he's at zero effort. Even the little things he does with women still, it's still all about these dates he plans and things he wants to do with women, it's always still about getting a woman to please him. I want a woman that's flexible. Let me take her to yoga to flex her out, make sure she's flexible. Once again, about her. It's not about making women feel special. It's about what can the woman do for you. Then next thing you know, he's on a date with, I think her name is Melissa or uh, Melissa or whatever, and they're smoking cigars. Once again, I need to teach her how to smoke a cigar because I want to smoke cigars. Everything Brent does is about, can I teach you the woman to do what I want you to do for me? I want to see Brent do something for somebody other than asking, asking, asking. He's selfish. 
He's selfish. He's selfish. He's self-centered. He's self-focused. Put self in front of it, and that's what Brent is. Well, let's go and double back because the person that went home last week was uh, Dante, and uh, Mr. Shavar had something to say about Dante going home. He said, yeah, sure. Dante looks good on paper. <laughs> that's what Shavar said with his big old belly hanging out. Uh, Dante looks good on paper, but he says, I'm, I'm more of the person for Ashley. First of all, Shavar, Shavar, I actually don't like you that way. What Ashley likes about Shavar is what a lot of people will like Shavar, that he's kind, he's intelligent, he seems to be a caring gentleman, but what people don't like about Shavar um, is his weight. That's what they don't like, his weight. I'm not even gonna say it's his looks, his facial features, because it's not that he's, a not, he's not a good looking person. Um, Shavar needs to lose some weight. There'd be no way a woman the size of Shavar could even think about coming on a dating show. A woman as big as Shavar coming on a dating show. Even when we talk about, oh, this woman is carrying a few extra pounds. She can't, she ain't carrying all the extra pounds that Shavar is carrying. So the fact that Ashley even chose Shavar actually adds into what I'm going to get into about Ashley. But Shavar is a nice man. He's intelligent. He's kind. He seems to have a lot of pieces of the puzzle, but a lot of people do not want a man as severely overweight. And I'm not going to say overweight. He actually is obese obese as Shavari. I think you're considered obese once you are more than 50 pounds overweight and he's more than 50 pounds overweight. So he can say Dante looks good on paper. Okay. But he's not good in physical form in terms of, you know, how he interacts with Ashley. Shavari needs to realize that he also looks good in some areas, but other areas he needs to improve. But I like Shavari, but he needs to back up. He needs to back up because he's walking around with a little bit of false bravado as well, where I like that he's pumping himself up for the things that he's bringing to the table, the things that are attractive about him. And even Ashley says she loves the way Shavar makes her feel when he puts his arms around her. I think she feels secure. She feels safe. She feels cared for. She gives love. But she's not physically attracted to Shavar. She's not. And I want to get into Ashley because I'm really starting to realize Ashley's got some real issues surrounding intimacy and sex. If y'all remember, I kept saying in the beginning, I don't know what it is about Ashley. She comes off as a little masculine, right? I believe that the whole thing with the daddy, with, with Ashley, with the daddy um, being an alcoholic, um, the type of disruption that probably caused in the house, the type of dysfunction that caused... I remember seeing the mother, the mother seemed a little bit stoic, a little bit cold, a little bit masculine herself. And I do know a lot about uh, alcohol programs, a lot of alcohol programs, AAA, they typically try to bring in a lot of religious teachings. They try to sometimes use religion to help people with it. People who have addictions get off the addiction. Some programs, not so much anymore, but back in the day, probably when her father was an alcoholic, AA, a lot of these alcohol programs absolutely had a Christian proponent to it or a religious component to it. I'm starting to wonder, y'all chime in and you let me know. And I even think, just say one more thing. I think that um, Kirk Franklin picked up on it. Because if you remember when Kirk Franklin was asking Ashley what type of guy she wanted, Ashley did not list anything physical. She refused to stay away from physical. She was all about, I want to be kind, caring gentle, which are all great qualities. But what, but what Kirk Franklin called her on was saying, you know, as a female, don't be afraid to ask for some physical characteristics that you want, because it is important for a woman to be attracted to her husband. Let me close these binds. It's, um, okay. Let, um, it is important for a woman to be attracted to her husband. So it was Kirk Franklin, who is in the church world, encouraging that it's okay to also have a criteria to want to be attracted. I think she picked Shavar. I don't think she was ever attracted to Shavar. I think she picked Shavar because he has the other qualities she wants in a man. Then she picks Matthew because Matthew has the sex appeal and the lust factor that I think Ashley really likes. Ashley has this masculine side to her which I think she uses to sort of push men away. Like I said, she doesn't like to hug. She doesn't like to do things. 
But then behind closed doors, she wants to sneak around and kiss Matthew. She can't seem to control her loins. And then she's doing this whole, um, I'm going to be celibate for three years. Like I said last week, and a lot of you chimed in on it, and a lot of you actually agree with me, that a lot of people, when they go full celibacy on purpose, sometimes it's because they want to bring balance back into their life. Maybe they felt that they were too far on the carnal side, too much on the sex side, and they felt that they were indulging that or giving into that too much. And so now what they're doing is they're overcorrecting and they're saying, you know what, I'm just going to go celibate, clear all that, clear out all that juju, clear out all that out, cleanse myself, you know, be, be like almost like not a born again virgin, but, you know, re-cleanse myself. And I'm going to go through a, um, like a fast. I'm going to go through, um, you know, cutting off the sex, cutting off the drinking to cleanse this juju I've been on. But sometimes the reason they had to do the cleanse is because there was a period of time when they weren't able to control it and it was a little bit more out of control. I think that's Ashley. I know I, I, I did a roundabout way. I think, let me get to my point. I think Ashley has problems surrounding sex and intimacy, intimacy with men. And what she does is she actually craves it because I don't think she got a lot of it from her father. When you have an alcoholic father, he doesn't have much left for you because he's so busy trying to manage his addiction he doesn't have much left for you. Same thing with the mother. The mother is taxed dealing with an alcoholic father. She's got so much going on with her and, and trying to help control, carry the load in the family with the father. She might not have much of that tenderness and empathy and sympathy that Ashley needed when she was a young girl. Let me tell you, drug addicts, alcoholics, they suck up. They suck up all the attention in the house because everyone has to cater to them. I know I had a sister who had a drug problem and they suck up attention in the house because everyone has to use so much of their energy to sort of, you know, help them, heal them, rally around them. So I've seen that happen in areas. And so I can see how in a situation where that could have happened to Ashley. So in one way, she then starts seeking um, that comfort, that attention from men. And that turns into sex. Just like she said with Matthew, she said that after she went through that thing, with Black Jesus, when Black Jesus was darn near telling off Jazzy and everyone else, she said she needed some comfort. So she didn't know how to soothe herself, but she needed some comfort. So what did she do? She ran over to Matthew's room. The man who she knew um, has innately probably some carnal, carnal and lustful stuff with him. And that's who she went to. She didn't go to Shavar. Shavar actually would have been the safe spot. You see what I'm saying? She, if she really wanted to feel comforted and hugged, she would have gone to Shavar. She didn't really want comfort. Ashley wanted um, what, what she went to Matthew for. She wanted some sex. She wanted some kissing. She didn't want to kiss Shavar. If she wanted to feel safe, secure, or well cared for, she would have gone to Shavar. But what she really wanted, she wanted sex. She wanted some kissing. She wanted some hugging. And she went to Matthew for that, even though she knew he was so-called being celibate. She still went and tempted him as well because she was tempted. She might have brought a bottle of liquor with her. She knew he wasn't drinking. She probably bought a bottle of liquor with her. And here's the funny thing about Ashley. She almost started getting on Matthew because black Jesus said Matthew had, uh, was drinking. He was lying to you. So now she's upset that um, now she's upset that Matthew might have lied to her and told her that he was really not drinking, but she's really drinking. Well, let's listen to this, Ashley. He told you he was celibate. He told you he was trying to say celibate. And so what you do is you go to his room in the middle of the night. <laughs> girl, girl. So you want to hold him to his promises of not drinking and not having sex. But the minute you want to get comforted at one o'clock in the morning, you run to the guy who's trying to be celibate. Girl, Ashley. Ashley got a lot of issues surrounding intimacy, sex, and men. And I think what she does is she has a lot of guilt around it too. A lot of guilt. It might come from religion. It might come from religion. I don't know where her guilt comes from, but she got a lot of guilt surrounding intimacy to the point was her spirit was so convicted on what she did. She had to go home to mama and daddy. She had to go home to mama, daddy, and regroup. And then when she came back, she went on a confession tour she had to repent to black Jesus and tell black Jesus what happened. 
And I don't know why any of these men would actually, after what, what she said, I don't think any of the men are really interested in Ashley anymore. Not really. Because let me tell you, there are not too many men and men who are going to want to hear from a woman that, hey, when I got weak and I needed comfort it, I summons a man to my room in the middle of the night. Now, they may know this is a competition, but they're not going to like that behavior from a woman because Ashley is showing once again, does she really have any self-control? I don't think that she does. And I think because she pulls on this being, feeling, um, wanting love, wanting attention, wanting that intimacy with the man, but then yes, she pushes them away with her masculine energy. And because she feels guilty about it, she's sneaking men in her room at midnight as if nobody's going to know and anyone's going to see. And when they do find out, she's all remorseful and repentful and embarrassed. Now she's running around repenting and telling everybody she's she's convicting um, who's named Brent for the same thing he did. So she's being judgmental on him. But yes, she's doing it the same way. It sounded a lot like what people talk about with the church. If you listen to Ashley. And you listen to people who say they don't go to church anymore and they don't like church people. A lot of it is Ashley. It's people who judge people for behavior, yet they're doing it themselves. She judged Brent and she's doing it. It's people who feel this enormous amount of guilt for some of their fleshly desires. And the way they handle those fleshly desires really wraps them up, really trips them up does head trips on them and they can't handle it. And that's what I think. I don't know. I think this stuff that's coming from Ashley is a combination probably be, be, between a religious upbringing or religious teachings and her alcoholic father. But it has got this girl all twisted up. She needs to go get some help. She needs to go get some help for someone to help her unwrap this. But Brent, you know, even though Jazzy left him, Jazzy was not feeling him. Jazzy was picking up the vibes on him. Jazzy wasn't one of my favorites anyway, to be honest. I'm going to tell you she wasn't one of my favorites because I think uh, Jazzy leads with, um, she has a lot of confidence, which is good. Uh, but I think that she doesn't have a healthy appreciation of, I want to say also men. That's what I think. That's what I'm going to say. Some of you may be mad at me, but that's what I'm going to say. So I think the idea of not competing for a man, a man, I get that. I kind of feel the same way. I, it's not like I want to be in competition, uh, like I'm going to compete. But I think what, what I have different from Jazzy is I don't think that she understands is naturally we are in competition. Sure, we don't want to be in a forced competition or we don't want to feel like that. But if you look at it, we are in sort of a competition and not a competition in which I've got to act outside of myself to win some man. No, I don't believe that. But I think the way that Jazzy operates in the world, which is probably one of the problems she's having in dating, is Jazzy's a tough woman. She's a tough woman. She's actually not a soft, soft or safe landing for a woman. She's the type of woman that she'll bite a man's head off. So I'm not quite sure of the type of man that Jazzy attracts. Because in one way, her personality really would need a stronger type of man because I think Jazzy has a strong personality. Um, but the problem with that strong energy of another man, she wouldn't necessarily cater to that energy, right? Because that strong man probably would want a different type of catering energy that would come from the woman. And I don't think Jazzy shows that. So in one way, Jazzy needs that strong energy, that strong chase of a man, which Brent doesn't show. He doesn't chase he doesn't, um, uh, you know, put a lot of work into getting a woman or finding a woman. I think Jazzy needs that. But the other part is that if she attracted that man, I feel like Jazzy holds back so much that she wouldn't be able to satisfy a man that puts in that type of energy. And I think her yin and her yang, her push and her pull are a little bit off. I think Jazzy needs to learn how to give a little bit more. So that type of man that she wants, he will be satisfied. She doesn't feed that man enough. It's okay with wanting that man, but you also got to know what does, what does that man want from a woman and what Jazzy is bringing to the table. She doesn't bring enough. When she says she's not vulnerable and she doesn't open up, well, that's what that man is going to need. See, that's the problem. She wants to be closed off. She doesn't want to give much up front and she wants the man to do all the work. Well, that doesn't work. 
because most men that are going to be attracted to Jazzy are going to be men who are already vulnerable, men who already have like maybe in touch with the emotional side. And they're not going to require as much for Jazzy to open up because guess what? They open up a lot. But here's the problem. If she attracts men that open up a lot, guess what's going to happen? She's going to run over them because now what happens is she feels like the man in a relationship and he feels she he he looks weak to her because he's actually showing more vulnerability than her. So when she attracts that vulnerable man, but yet she's so hard and strong, she's going to feel like, dang, I'm hard and strong and he's weaker than me. I want a stronger man. But what she's not getting is the stronger man needs a more softer energy from her. She's got to balance that out. That's what a lot of women, I think they miss that in dating. They know the man they want, but they're not becoming the woman that that man they want needs, right? You can't be this strong woman always doing everything, but then want a man to come in and do everything for you. It doesn't work that way. Because that strong man that wants to do everything, he wants a woman who's going to step back and accept what he's doing. So you got to learn to fall back so that you encourage that energy from that man to do more. Even Melissa talked about she's the one in her family that does everything for everyone. I think when she was talking to Brent on the date, I do everything. I carry all these loads. I take care of everybody. But who's there for me? Who's going to take care of me? Exactly, Melissa. Who is going to take care of you when you're walking around and you're showing yourself as so capable in other areas, even to the point where you can take care of yourself and others? What happens is people miss you. They don't even see you needing any care or concern. And a lot of women think, well, I don't want to have to dummy myself down. It's not dummying yourself down. What it's doing is it's not doing so much so that you uh, make room for other people to do things for you. The key to having people do more for you is stop doing for others. I know that sounds weird. It sounds contrary to what people want to hear. But the key to having more people do for you is to stop doing so much for others. I want somebody to hear this. And I know people who are givers because I'm a giver. It's hard to do that because you always want to step in. You always want to help. But what you got to understand is that's the short game. The short satisfaction of helping other people leads to a longer dissatisfaction of not having people come in your life and help you. You've got to stop helping people. All you people who are addicted to helping other people, I was one of them. All you people who are overgivers, I'm telling you, the key to having balance in your life is to stop doing so much for others. Learning to say no. Even when you have the ability to help, even when you have the resources to help, the trick to it is saying no. The trick to it is finding a way to not say yes to it. Maybe lead them in a different direction. Ask someone else to have to help them, but you don't take on the burden because then what happens is that leaves you open to other people helping you. And that also leads you to get more in touch with what are the areas in your life you would like to see more help in. And then you can look for that. So when it comes to Jazzy, I don't think that Brent is the man for her. I don't think that. But I think she's got to figure out where her where her space is. Where is her space? But let me tell you, Black Jesus, let me get on Black Jesus. He was convicting the soul of Matthew. He told Matthew, listen, if you want a fake drink, that's your problem. He said, I'm not watching you. Um, if I see you pour a shot, I just assume you're going to drink it. I'm not watching you that much to see if it goes down your throat and if you swallow it. He said, you're not that important to me. You are not that important to me. It was a little bit of combination of the truth and being messy. Was he being a little bit messy when he told, um, he told, uh, Ashley that, uh, no, he was drinking. It was a little bit messy because he could have said, I did see him pour a drink, but I don't know if he drank it. He could have said that, but he went, ahead, he went a little further and said, I know he was drinking. He was taking shots. And when they showed the, the drink, I do have to say it did look like pineapple juice. It did not look like a shot of liquor because otherwise it would have been a heck of a shot. It was pretty, it was pretty up there, pretty high on the rim of the cup. So I'm actually going to go and believe Matthew that he wasn't drinking. But let me tell you, uh, black Jesus handled Matthew. Black Jesus told Matthew, you not that important. And he says, are you moving with a little bit of dishonesty? I forget who, I think it was El Ramey who told me that Matthew has been on another reality TV show. So maybe black Jesus is picking up on when he says, you're not moving with a whole lot of honesty. Maybe he's picking up on the fact that he already knows that Matthew 
is on this show, maybe for some clout. I don't know. Is he a reality TV chaser? Is that what Black Jesus is talking about? But Black Jesus went home and said he's okay with it because if Ashley's going to come up, come to him like this, he said, she ain't ride with me. And if she ain't ride with me, I ain't ride with her. <laughs> Black Jesus said, you ain't the woman for me, Ashley, either. You are not the woman for me. Right now, Ashley is loving herself some Matthew. She might as well just go on and sleep with him. Because that's what she all, that's the only thing she want to do. All she want to do is sleep with Matthew. She want to bust it wide open for Matthew. That's what she want to do. That's exactly what she want to do with Matthew. She want to bust it wide open for him. And then all she going to do is feel guilty. And then she going to run him back home a to mom and daddy. But once again, I was glad that Brent got done by another woman. Because you know what I like about these reality TV shows? I want people to come away learning something. I really do. I want people coming away learning something. And we have now seen Brent on Ready to Love. And now we see him on this The One. And I hope this is the last dating reality TV we see Brent on. And I hope he finally learns his lesson that he's part of the problem. And I don't think he's gotten that. I think keep thinking he thinks is I haven't met the right woman. I haven't met the woman. And I think what he finally realizes is he's part of the problem. We see he's going to be tonguing down the other Ashley next week, okay? And I really hope, and when I, we start to see them a little bit closer together, I hope she has more of the energy that he needs, and I hope he has the energy that she needs. But I sure hope he realizes and he values Ashley and doesn't think that he's the prize and that he doesn't have to do anything for Ashley besides rub on her booty, kiss her lips, and tongue her down and bring her to the bedroom. He better do something for her. I'm going to see, I'm going to need to see more from Brent than tonguing a woman down, commenting on her body, talking about how she needs to be flexible, having all these sexual innu innuendos. He needs to learn some lessons. And if he needs to get rejected by 15 women or six women on this show, then let it happen. Let it happen so after this, he can go on about his way, learn a lesson, stop coming on these dating reality shows, and realize that he is not the whole prize, period. And for Ashley, I hope she realizes she needs some therapy to figure out what is all this conflict she has between sex, intimacy, and men because it's getting in the way of her romantic relationships. But that's it, y'all. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, check back in with me over the next couple of days for the Martha's Vineyard recap and also for my breakdown I'm going to do on the uh, Wifey podcast with Simone and Rashid. If you haven't watched either one of them, uh, go ahead and binge watch it real quick. Uh, Martha's Vineyard is on Bravo and the Wifey podcast, of course, is on YouTube, Dear Wifey. All right, talk to y'all later. Bye.